الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها النبي إن إنا أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا وبشر المؤمنين بأن لهم من الله فضلا كبيرا ولا تطع الكافرين والمنافقين ودع أذاهم وتوكل على الله وكفى بالله وكيلا صدق الله العظيم Today in Eid we were talking about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought peace for the world and taught us the Ummah how to live in peace and with peace. We talked about the characteristics of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how amazingly he brought the change in the world in such a way that we cannot even imagine and it's a challenge for the world that with all of our efforts if we can bring the change that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought it within two decades. I would just like to continue with the same thing mentioning few more points about it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he conquered Makkah Mukarramah, we know the people of Makkah were the people who always were busy in plotting against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were always busy planning against Islam and the Muslims. Those were the people who tortured Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam many of the times were seen bleeding throughout his body and they tortured his companions and we know what type of torture Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een went through but when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conquered Makkah Mukarramah Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'een say that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's head was down out of humbleness and his, he was putting his head so down that his beard was continuously touching the back of his camel. Out of humbleness his head is down. At that time when he is taking over and he has all the opportunity of taking revenge from all of those people who did anything against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or against any of the Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een throughout these past 13 years of Makkah Mukarramah and another 8 years of Medina Munawwara. So taking a revenge of 21 years was very easy for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time. But instead of that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dealing with those people was totally different. Sa'ad bin Ubad radiallahu anhu was the leader of one of the clans in Medina Munawwara called Al-Khazraj, one of the largest clans of Medina Munawwara. There were two large clans in Medina Munawwara, Aus and Khazraj. And Sa'ad bin Ubad radiallahu anhu was leading the people of Khazraj having a flag in his hand. As he's entering Makkah Mukarramah, he sees the leader of the people of Makkah, Abu Sufyan. 
So he said to Abu Sufyan, out of anger, knowing what these people did to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now they're taking over. So they are full, some of them are full of anger and rage. Not for what has happened to them, for what these people have done against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and against Islam. So Sa'ad bin Ubadah radiyallahu anhu, the leader of the people of Khazraj, says to Abu Sufyan at that time, Al-Yawma Yawmul Malhama. Today is the day of war. Today we would show you people what war is all about. What could Abu Sufyan see? He kept his head down. But these people knew who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. In these type of situations, people would try to find some sources to get to these leaders and ask them to be humble, to be nice. And still the leaders won't believe and won't do it. And here Abu Sufyan himself, the leader of the people of Mecca, he himself went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he narrated these words of Sa'ad bin Ubadah radiallahu anhu to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Sa'ad bin Ubadah, as he was entering Mecca Mukarramah, he said to me, al yawma yawmul malhamah, today is the day of war. And we will show you today what the war is all about. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, Sa'ad said it wrong. al yawma yawmul marhamah, he used the, he changed the lamb with the ra, which means marhamah, which means today is the day of rahmah, of mercy and of peace. He went by the Kaaba. And as he gathered all the leaders of Quraysh, he asked them, what do you think I would do to you people now? They said, you are our brother, and you are, the older people are saying, you are like our nephew. And we haven't seen a better person than you, so we expect that you would only do something good. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, idhabu fa antum Go, today I'm leaving, letting all of you people go. In these type of situations and with those type of people, to treat them in this manner, in this way, it's a history. Abu Sufyan, who became Muslim later on, radiallahu anhu says, that when they had a famine in Mecca Mukarramah, Abu Sufyan, radiallahu anhu, at that time, he was the leader of the people of Quraysh. He went to Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Medina Munawwara, and he said to him, Ya Muhammad, you claim that you have been sent as a mercy for the people. Your people are dying. Pray to Allah for them. The punishment came because of rejecting him. But now he is coming to the very same person. Not with any excuses. He is not saying, okay, we'll believe in you if you make dua for us. No. Because he have been sent as a mercy, so make dua for us. And here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no argument and nothing in return that no, you people are the one who deserve it. And you people did all of this to yourself. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates the hadith right away. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised his hands and he made the dua for them. For Mutiru, they got the rain right there. Started pouring in Makkah Mukarramah. This is Nabi Rahmah, the Prophet of Rahmah and Mercy, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Unfortunately, some people are using the word warrior for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What does warrior mean? We have to define this word. What does warrior mean? Look at the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many years he lived in the world? 63 years. He died at the age of 63. In these 63 years, 40 years before Nabuwa, even the Kuffar used to call him As-Sadiq Al-Ameen, the most truthful and the most trustworthy person. 13 years in Makkah Mukarramah, where fighting was not allowed to the extent Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had instructed the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa if anyone 
did anything to you people to hurt you, you are not allowed to take even your revenge, which means even adl, as we were talking about in Eid, even adl, which means justice was not allowed, go below that and just forgive. Keep beyond justice at that time, all the time. Keep on forgiving it all the time. In those days, once there was some argument between Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu and Abu Jahl. The worst enemy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The leader of the kuffar. During this argument, Abu Jahl got upset and he slapped Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu went for justice and he slapped him once back. It was Adam, it was equal rights, it was justice. That slap for a slap, nothing more than that. As soon as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew about it, what was his reaction? A person like us would celebrate, today you slap my enemy, good. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Abdullah, my instruction to you people are that you have to keep a step beyond justice. And that is afi, <coughs> keep on forgiving. And since you disobeyed me in that regard, although you hit the enemy of Allah, but you deserve the punishment because you are supposed to practice afu, forgiving, not equal rights. And you were not supposed to go for that. So now, as a punishment to you, Abdullah, you have to leave Makkah Mukarramah. Subhanallah. Ya Rasulullah hit your enemy. He was talking against you. He was talking against Allah. He was talking against Deen. No, you are not allowed. Our morals, morals were supposed to be higher than that, O oh, Abdullah. This is why I told you people, don't go for justice now. Always keep on forgiving. And since you took your revenge, you have to leave Makkah Mukarramah. For three days, don't come back to Makkah Mukarramah. Expel him out of Makkah Mukarramah for three days. As a punishment for slapping Abu Jahl back for a slap. So, we were saying that when Rasulullah and these people call Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a warrior. 40 years before Nabuwa, he's not involved in any of these things. 13 years in Makkah Mukarramah, they're getting, getting beat up, tortured from all the sites, from everywhere. And the instructions are, keep on forgiving. Don't even take revenge. And now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the time of immigration is 53 years old. The first battle that took place in the history of Islam was the battle of Badr. And that was in the year 2 of Hijrah, the second year of Hijrah. That leaves only eight years of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life. Out of 63 years, all the battles that took place in his life were only the last eight years. And I'm not going to go into those details of why these wars took place. You will be surprised to go back to the history to find most of them were de defensive. Some of them were to stop those people from coming into Medina and attacking people in Medina Munawwara. But anyway, look at the results of it. With all the battles, with all the battles that took place during the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whether he himself was there or he was not. As I said, only life, the last eight years of his life. But even what was the result of these battles that took place in the last eight years of his life? If you want to call him a warrior, because we have to define that word, what does it mean? The result of those were. We will be surprised, and if I ask a question, we may not even believe the answer once we hear it. How many people, what was the total number of people killed as a result of wars during the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What was that total number? The total number of the kuffar killed as a result of wars. 759 people. 759 of the kuffar. And the total number of Muslims, Sahaba Ridwanullah, Shuhada, 
359. That brings the total to 1018 throughout the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 1018 people dying as a result of wars throughout the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Compare it. First World War. Eight and a half million people. Eight and a half million people in the First World War. 8.5 million. Second World War. 20 million people. And we are not including the number of people missing or wounded. Only people killed. 20 million people were killed as a result in the, uh, of the war of the Second World War. And within this last century, we just got out of this century. We are in the year 2002. In this last century, starting from the year 1900 to the year 2000. You know how many people are killed as a result of wars? 180 million people. This is the official number, not including the unofficial numbers. Which we know that mostly is much higher than this. Just within this last century that we just came out of it, 180 million people were killed as a result of wars. 180 million people. And we are calling a person who throughout his life, with all the wars of 63 years of his life, 1,018 people killed altogether, including merged from his side and the ones killed from the other side. So we have to define the word warrior. What does it mean? And if it refers to these things, and if any person having war in eight years of his life, then mashallah, we have a long list of people then. And if you look at the number of people killed, then there is no comparison. Then we have to find some new words to be added into dictionary. If 1018 will make a person warrior, then we have to add some more words in the dictionary to define those through whom, because of whom, we are having 180 million people getting killed in, a, in 100 years, in one century. So really, people are not realizing what are they talking about. And sometimes it might click to our mind that nowadays we have weapons of mass destruction and this is why we are having so many people killed at once. Of course, that doesn't give us any excuse for killing the civilians, killing the innocent people. But anyway, if we just take that, then we have to find some other examples to satisfy these people that there are people that you trust. There are people that you always take their names. There are people that you say that you respect and you think that you follow. They have done much more than this. Open the Bible. You will be amazed. And I will give you only one example. There is a book in Bible called Numbers. Chapter 31 is all about one battle, not about wars. Just one battle that took place according to them during the time of Moses, not Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Don't mix the two people up. Our Musa alayhi salam in our Quran is different than the Moses over there. We don't want to blame Musa alayhi salatu wasalam for these things. That's Moses that they talk about according to the Bible. According to this Numbers, chapter 31, read it. You would find Moses is telling them, God ordered me to take revenge for the children of Israel from a nation, Medianites. Who are Medianites? The town that supported Moses, the time when he left Egypt, he killed a person and he left Egypt. Those were the people who helped him at that time, but now he has to take revenge from those people. And taking revenge from those people, how did he take revenge? The order was, go and kill those people as much as you can. They went over there, killed all the men in the town, burned down the whole town. They burned down the whole town and captured 
all the women and the children. When they came back with these captives of war, Moses saw these people and he got upset. Why was he upset for? We we'll pause here for a minute. Look at the word upset. Highlight it in your mind. We'll come back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after one of the battles was over, he saw a woman that was laying dead in the battlefield. Out of 1,018 people, total number of people that is killed during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battlefields as a result of war, only one woman. Only one woman. 117 men, 1,017 men, one woman. When he saw the body of that woman, open Sahih al-Bukhari, open Sunan Abu Dawood, open all the books of Ahadith, you will find Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he saw the body of that woman, he asked the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa who killed her? And they started looking for the person. Meanwhile, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the instruction, never again raise your hand on a woman. You are not allowed to kill a woman anymore. Don't kill no children, no woman. And any person that is sitting in his place of worship, whether that be a synagogue or it may be a church, if a person is sitting in there in his place of worship and he's worshiping whatever he's worshiping, you are not allowed to harm that person. Right away he issued these instructions. According to the Bible now. Moses is upset. Why is he upset for? Why did you people capture all of these people without hurting them? So now the orders are, kill all the children. And as far as the adult women, look for the virgin ones and keep them for your use and kill the rest of them. This is in Bible. With all the changes that exist nowadays, this is how it is in there. How many people did they kill? It does not specify the number. I did not want to read the whole thing before I come to any conclusions. But at least it says, just the virgin girls that they saved for their use, after killing all the men, all the women, all the children, just the virgin young girls that they were able to use. How many were there? 32,000 virgin girls that they saved for themselves. What does the word warrior mean? We have to define the word. And then we'll see where does it fit. And therefore I mentioned earlier that we are not talking about Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam. We are talking about that Moses that the Bible is talking about. When Bible says that Jesus, not Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu was salam, Jesus said to people, if you think I came for a peace, I say, no, you are wrong. I came for a sword. This is the Bible. It also says over there that according to them, Jesus said, if anyone has no sword, if there is a person who has no sword, let him sell his garment to buy one. Let him sell his garment to buy a sword. Because I did not come for peace, I came for division. The word division is used over there. I came for division. But again, I would remind, not Isa alayhi salatu was salam. It's Jesus of the Bible that saved these things. But the point is, when these type of words are used, then we have to define the words and see where they fit. And do they really fit? On Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam billah. Would these things prove that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had any of those things or had anything to do with these things? Subhanallah. Such a peaceful man. Such a peace loving person that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is approached by a Jew who had given something to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he had given some food to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for one month. After 28 days, this person came. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting in the masjid. In the group of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa 
and we know how much they respected Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They would, they would not even allow his hair or his saliva to fall on the ground. There's how much respect they had for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. That person came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He grabbed Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with his clothes, and he said, "Ya Muhammad, give me my money back today." He said, "The month is not over yet." We have few more days for the month to be over. I'll give it to you before the month ends. He said, no, I know you people always use excuses. You people never like to pay us for it. You just take it from us and you don't pay us back for it. Umar radiallahu anhu got so upset. He said, Ya Rasulullah, allow me to just take care of him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no ya Umar. What you are supposed to do is, you should have asked him, to ask me in a gentle way and ask me to pay it back in a nice way. Ya Umar, that should have been your responsibility. Not scaring this person. Yes, I took it from him as a loan. He's asking back. This was the word of Rasulullah. The person who has a right, he can say a few words. So he's saying those few words. As soon as that you heard these statements of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right away he took the shahada and he uttered the kalima, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammad an abduhu wa rasul. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a prophet of Allah. And before I end, I would just like to remind of two. As the month of Ramadan is over, we don't want to give up with our ibadahs, with our fastings. Six days of the month of Shawwal. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, a person who fast during the month of Ramadan, then he would fast six days of shawal, it will be like fasting the whole year. Because al-hasanatu bi ashri amthaliha. Each deed is rewarded ten times. So 30 days of Ramadan, six days after Ramadan, that's 36 days, multiplied by 10, 360 days of the year. Lunar calendar. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that fast six days in the month of Shawwal. No restrictions which of those days or they don't even have to be continuous. Any of these six days of the month of Shawwal. Second thing, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a habit of fasting many days of the year. But if we, at least for ourselves, if we can afford, it will be nice that we just specify three days of the month that we fast every month. 13, 14, and the 15th of the month. That is the minimum amount that we can find in the hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would be fasting every month. So we are not going by week. If we go by month, so at least three days every month. And these three days will simply mean as another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, Al-Hasanatu bi Ashriyam Thaliha, three days is just like fasting 30 days. Fasted three days of the month, like you got the reward of as if you have fasted the 30 days of the month. So inshallah, in this way we'll be able to keep connected with the fasting and through fasting, keep connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't forget the Quran, the book of Allah. Try to finish one Quran a month, one just a day. And that is at least we should do it to ourselves that we get used to reciting Quran and finishing Quran over and over because this is how we will be able to keep ourselves connected to it. Once, inshallah, we get used to reciting it, then we ourselves would like to learn it, practice it, and then learn the meanings of it and bring it into our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfiq and guide all of us to Salat al Mustaqim and keep all of us connected to Allah so to Himself through His book, through His ibadahs, and through the fara'id, sunan, and wajibat. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa lakum wa lisa'ir al Muslimina wa al Muslimat wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillah.